Hi, my name is Justin Wilson. I'm going to be talking about MOLITOF. MOLITOF stands for Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization Time of Flight Mass Spectroscopy. It was developed in 1988 by Professor Franz Hillenkamp and a group of his assistants at the University of Munster in Germany. They needed an instrument to analyze large biomolecules that they faced the problem that they were coupled with low volatility and they were thermal instability. The process of that goes through with Molotov is that first there, uh, you need a polymer and it needs to be dissolved in a solvent. Once it's dissolved in a solvent, you need to add a matrix. Now the only problem is the matrix has to absorb UV radiation. And the matrix is normally added in about 10,000 times more than the sample. And this is because they want the matrix to absorb most of the radiation instead of the sample absorbing the radiation. And this helps to prevent unwanted sample fragmentation. Now the matrix will isolate the polymers from one another and it will serve as a source of uh, protons for the sample to ionize. After the sample has been prepared, uh, the solution is loaded into the chamber. And this chamber is then, all the air in the chamber is evacuated out of it. They use a vacuum pump to get rid of all the air. <clears throat> now this this causes the sample to evaporate or the solvent to evaporate and it leaves a dispersed compound that contains the matrix and the sample. Now it's at this time that a after this is done a laser shoots short pulses of light at a 330 to 360 nanometer range causing the sample to almost basically explode and this vaporizes the matrix and ionizes the sample into the plus one or minus one state. <coughs> now, normally the polymers are too big and heavy to actually evaporate, but since it's such at high temperatures and low pressures, uh, evaporation occurs. And this leaves us with ionized polymers in the gaseous phase. Now, next, Ions are accelerated into by electrodes uh, to through uh, it's accelerated to opposite ends of a tunnel, which we know the length of. And if it's a negative ion, it'll go to the cathode. If it's a positive ion, it accelerates toward the anode. And the charge just depends on what polymer you're using and what matrix is being uh, used as well. And the electro force is actually used to accelerate the particles down the tunnel towards the detector. Now, the time it takes to reach the detector is solely dependent on the mass of the fragment. Since they have the, the ions have the same charge, once the uh, molecules reach the detector, there's a peak that is uh, displayed on the spectrum and there the size of the peak is proportional to the number of molecules that reach the detector uh, the size of the peak is proportional to the number of molecules that reach the detector at a given time now once all that said there are advantages and disadvantages of Molotov. The advantages are that you only need a small sample. Like, I mean, it's you can have as little as one uh, one p mole can give a very resolved spectrum. And the other advantage is, like I said earlier, this technique works very well with bottom biomolecules and it cuts down on the uh, fragmentation and this allows for ions to be identified in mixtures. Now the disadvantages. It's difficult to find which matrix you need to isolate the polymer that you have. Because since you have to have a UV absorbing matrix then that's what causes your main problems and also 
their some ions may be collisionally relaxed, which this is due to sulfide ionization because the majority of the energy is used volatilizing the matrix rather than exciting the exciting the ions. It's uh, possible for the ions to actually res relax from the excited state after some collisions. And then this uh, technique, their contaminants can actually interfere with the spectra causing very high peaks. And one of the biggest ones is the salt. Now, Molly's off in the actual article, there's a new technique Maltitoff technique used to genotype SMPs, and they called this uh, new technique VSET, and they compared it to other techniques with Maltitoff called probe and pinpoint. Now, the results are they said they had shorter reten or extensions, which actually, if you have long extensions, then you might miss uh, miss genotype a heterozygous for a homozygous and this can cause a lot of problems. Also, there you can actually genotype more than one site in a single tube. So in a single run you can test 15 different sites and that cuts down the cost and the time it takes to genotype. And then lastly they actually reduce the salt effect which is a big, big concern because that actually reduced the cost as well. And thank you for your time.